going to talk as loud as I can, but as has been the case, baby is sleeping, so I can't be too loud. So if I sound whispery, that's why. Um, so we have a couple videos today. I'm really going to break this down into kind of the key ideas for this lesson. This is one of my favorite lessons of the semester. In fact, it might be my favorite. Um, and as a math teacher, I am entitled to my personal favorite topics that I get to teach. And I love trig identities. I love them when I was in school. Um, I'm not a huge puzzle fan, but for some reason, the puzzle-esque aspect of this always intrigued me. So what are we doing today? Um, this is 812 trig identities. We're going to simplify expressions using these things called trig identities. This first video will introduce what they are and we'll go over, uh, I believe, four or six examples of using trig identities to, to simplify a complicated looking trig expression all the way down to one word, basically, or one trig ratio. Then we'll have a couple more videos unpacking some additional examples and ideas. Um, it's worth noting that today being day 12 um, precedes a review day of days 10 through 12. So we're going to review solving and we're going to review this tomorrow. Okay, being Friday. And then on Monday, we'll have a full-blown review day of all the topics, days 1 through 12 in this um, unit and then on Tuesday our plan is to take a trig test on the computer so more to come on that I just want that on your radar Tuesday we're planning on testing all right okay so if we're going to talk about trig identities we should start by asking the question what are they in mathematics an identity is an equation which is always true. These can be trivial, such as x equals x. We actually have a property named after that called the reflexive property. If you flip those two things around, they're still the same. I guess it's not named after that, but it's similar. Regardless, that'd be a trivial case of two things being equal and always true. Or we can look at useful things such as the Pythagorean theorem. The Pythagorean theorem is an identity because it is something in mathematics that is always true. The sum of the squares of the two legs of a right triangle are equal to the hypotenuse length squared of that right triangle. And that is true for all right triangles. So we call that an identity. There are loads of trigonomic identities, and that is very true. There are a ton of them. We're only going to look at a few today, like a very small few. Okay, Granik, we can't talk right now. Um, they will help us simplify things like that. So this is kind of a complicated trig problem. People look at that and think, oh my gosh, this is super complicated. Well, no, this actually simplifies down to just sine. The product of tangent and cosine is equal to just sine. And we'll talk about why. So first, let's get a few of the basics written down in our notes. We'll make a cheat sheet. So these are the reciprocal trig functions written down, but we're going to look at them in a different way. We're going to look at them as identities. So anytime you see sine, you can rewrite it as 1 over cosecant. And likewise, anytime you see cosecant, you can rewrite that as 1 over sine. And that's going to be a more useful thing. The, the functions on the right, the identities on the right, are going to be way more useful to us than the identities on the left. Pause the video, though. Write all six of these down so we have them uh, to reference here in the coming minutes. All right. So let's practice this. Simplify each trig expression down to one trig function. We're going to do that by using a strategy that I use 90% of the time. And that is to rewrite the entire expression in terms of just sine and cosine. 
So if you see anything that isn't a sine and a cosine, rewrite it as sine or cosine. Okay, so let's look at this first example. You can pause the video if you need to get caught up. I'm writing this down, but I'm going to dive right in. Um, so tangent is the same as y over x, but in terms of sine and cosine, tangent is sine over cosine. All right, that's one of our identities. Tangent is equal to sine over cosine, and that's because sine is y and cosine is x. Tangent is y over x. It's opposite over adjacent. All of these things are true. Okay, and then we have cosine that we haven't done anything with. It's on the top, and if we want to write it as a fraction, we can go ahead and do that. Well, what happens here? Well, when we multiply two fractions together, we can cancel across the two fractions and the numerators and denominators. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Cosine over cosine is 1, so that cancels. And this entire fraction, or this entire product, simplifies to just sine over 1 or just sine. So it is true that tangent times cosine of any angle, doesn't matter what number you plug in, you're going to get the same answer as you do for just taking the sine of that angle. Cool. Okay, so how about this one? So here we have secant, which is the same as 1 over cosine. And then we have cosine, which I'm happy about, because that's going to cancel here in a moment. And then we have sine. All right. So secant and cosine cancel, because cosine over cosine is just 1. And again, we're left with just sine. So this is what we're doing. It today, we're simplifying trig expressions using these trig identities. I think this is fun because I love making something move from complicated to simple. It just kind of makes me happy. Sorry to get personal. Anyway, moving on. Okay, here's some more lengthy ones that look frightening, but they're actually not all that bad. Um, so we have sine. We have sine. Cosecant is 1 over sine. And cotangent, we have to be careful with this one. Cotan is cosine over sine. All right, so what happens? Um, well, we have a sine on the bottom and a sine on the top. And we actually have another sine on the top and another sine on the bottom. I'm going to add ones here just to emphasize the top and bottom aspect of this. So those two signs on the bottom, on the right side, cancel out with the two signs on the top, on the left side there. And we just have cosine of theta as our final simplified answer. And last one. Um, here we have a cosecant squared. Cosecant is the reciprocal of sine, and the squared part just means that we have 1 over sine squared. So that's that. Sorry, that S got a little goofy. Fantastic. Um, so what happens here? Well, this is a slightly more unique case. Sine squared is actually the same as like two sines. Sine times sine is sine squared. So if you want to rewrite this, sine of theta times sine of theta, if you want to rewrite it actually broken up like that, you're totally welcome to do that. Otherwise, in your head, just think of it that way. Cool, cool. Okay, um, the important thing here is that the sine on the top of the right side cancels with one of the signs that came out of sine squared. It doesn't cancel with both of them, just one of them. Uh, it's one for one. Okay, so on the top here, I'm left with just a cosine. And on the bottom, I've got ones, and then I have one sine on the left remaining. <laughs> The directions were to boil this down to just one trig function, um, and cosine over sine is the same as cotan. 
So cotan would be my single final simplified answer. Cool. All right, I tried to pick these examples or create them. I made them strategically so that they emphasized a few different things. Um, let me just double check here. So I'm going to save this for the next video. Uh, after this, the next video will be a